introduce our last present presenter. Yay. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name. Sen Shisti Chapati. Gentlemen, you've sat through 25 presenters. This is the 26th year of the program and the best year. I'm the 26th presenter. Uh, I won't say I'm the best. I certainly don't have any cockroaches to pull out of my sleeve. <laughs> so I worked this summer studying the advantages of double-stranded DNA extraction from cheek cell and saliva-based samples, which is a lot simpler than it sounds. And it sounds pretty simple. All right, so to set the scene, DNA extraction happens everywhere, all across the world. Lots of researchers do it. You can see the cycle for it right here on the right. I won't go into details. And the most common method of DNA extraction in humans is from whole blood. But this summer, I worked instead with extracting the DNA from saliva. And the reasoning behind that is the difference between saliva and blood can mean the difference between this and this. But babies speak for themselves. Saliva is a non-invasive and just an overall much easier way to, to get a sample from which to extract DNA. But the fundamental question was, can you actually effectively get DNA out of this source? And that's what I was testing. So I worked with two different collection methods here. And the first is the Bodhi Technology Bugle Swabs. And you can see the diagram of it right here. It's e-beam treated, which means it's sterile. Flat surface, which isn't a major detail, but that allows for optimal collection, and it purportedly allows for a good DNA yield. The next kit that I worked with was the Origin Collection Kit. That's just basically a tube that you spit into, and it's simple and efficient, also non-invasive, at least more so than intravenous blood collection, and it mixes with a DNA-preserving solution so that you can have a long shelf life from the samples you collect. So I worked, I didn't do the extractions manually, of course. I worked with two extraction machines. First, the Kaigen Easy One, which was used to extract the DNA from the cheek cells. It's salt-contained, and all the processing steps are totally run by the machine. Again, I won't go into details. I know you're all tired, so you can see that later during my poster presentation. And then I also worked with the Hamilton Chromatic Star, which is a much larger extraction machine, which ran with the saliva sampling. And it employs magnetic bead technology, which is exactly what it sounds like. Magnetic beads, not actually magnets, that attract the DNA and pull it out from the source it's in, in this case, the saliva. And to explain the results, first I'm going to go over this table right here, which actually represents the product hypotheses from Bodhi Technologies. And it says that the most DNA will be found at the tip of the buccal swab, the least at the base, and a median amount somewhere in the middle. So with that said, you'd expect the graphs of that data to look something like this. It's a linear progression, and it's exactly what it sounds like. The most DNA is found at the tip, a median amount in the middle, and the least at the base. But what my graph actually looked like after running this experiment was this. Yeah, so the points are all over the place, and there are multiple reasons for that. First of all, this is a relatively new technology. We're not really sure how we're doing, what we're doing, so you also have to take into account you're getting these samples from different people who all have different ways to well, swab. And of course, you also have to take into, into account the bacteria present in the mouth and the bacteria collected on the swabs, even after you're storing it because the storage wasn't completely sterile. And conclusion. So you can see on this graph here what the typical range, the typical yield from blood is, and that's per one milliliter, you get Normally 25 micrograms of DNA, but we're working with two milliliters here mostly. So that would be about 50 micrograms per every two milliliters for whole blood. So the saliva matches up to that pretty well. As for the buccal swabs, as you saw in the previous graph, most of the DNA yielded was under 15 micrograms. So that still has a lot, that leaves a lot of room for improvement. Extraction techniques still need to be perfected, as well as the, as well as the collection technique. And now the last slide, but the most important slide, the acknowledgments. Uh, first, Mr. Ruben Rosario. Everyone thanks him, and that's for a reason. 
if he didn't do what he did, we'd all be sitting at home over the summer, probably just practicing twiddling our thumbs and doing nothing, nothing useful. And then Miss Teresa Giesler, who set up my entire project, she was the main person I worked with. During the last few weeks of my project, she kind of disappeared, and I'm convinced that's because the government whisked her away so she could do some private project DNA related. I don't know. Are you CDR's NASA lab? Everyone that donated the saliva to me, really. And they really wet my excitement for this project. Um, mom and Dad, uh, they've given me some great advice along the way. My mom, just before I came up here, she said, keep it short, we've been here for two and a half hours. <laughs> and then, of course, the Partners in Science class of 2012. Uh, I really enjoy going to all the exhibits that are meant for 10-year-olds with you guys. And finally, my brother. He didn't really do anything, but he was sad that I wasn't going to acknowledge him. So, Shrey, thank you. <laughs> She said what I was going to say. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. We are running kind of uh, late on the schedule.